going. Who the hell are you, man? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. We are the knights! Uh-huh. Hold on to your butt. And now for something completely different. Hello out there and welcome to the Knights of Nerd 2 podcast. We're a podcast for all things nerd. I'm your host. My name is Chris. I'm here in person with... Master Cheeks reporting for duty. It's Sean. And on the Skype hotline, we have both. I am a bundle that you can purchase to get all the Sam you want all the time. It's Sam. Open uh, the Bombay doors. I got hot takes coming. It's John. Sam, how much is your bundle? <laughs> are, are, we, are we packing? If you have to ask, you can't afford it. <laughs> Damn, I threw that time away. All right, folks, we got a sort of a packed episode of small, a bunch of small things here. We got some uh, just like Sam's bundle. (laughs) (laughs) You'll get your dime's worth. (laughs) Have some news. Quick hits. They're going to be quick hits with the news, I think. So we have a couple shows that we want to talk about. um, Sort of sporadic here. Sean watched the first two episodes of Halo season two. It's what's been released. It's so far as what's been released. Yeah. New season came Caught out. Up. Came out yesterday, I think, right? Came to, out today, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So there's Halo two. We have Masters of the Air, which it's been three weeks. We have to at this point. We have to discuss it. Uh, apologies to those who, who have not yet bought Apple Plus. Sam. <laughs> and Sean. And Sean. Yeah. But let's face it, this is more of a Sham show than a Sean's show. Yes, that is that is true. Uh, Say that three times fast. Sham show. I know. I screwed that up the first time. I'm not doing it again. (laughs) All right. And then we had what? Two movies. We have May, December, which John John brought up last week and said that nobody was going to watch it. But I did. And I went down the rabbit hole. Really did. And. Nyad, which nobody else has watched, but it was up for two Oscars, two leading ladies Oscars. Yep. So I figured I, I thought it was best picture. It was my mistake, but I gave it a shot anyway. Nyad, or as I like to call it, the reason why we had to talk about Barbie two weeks ago. Yeah, I can, I can, <laughs> I can pitch this real quick, but I think that was it for this week, right? Yep. So far. Yep. So far. All right. Starting off with the news. Quick hits. News. Uh, you want me to go first? I had a couple yeah, of things. Go ahead, go ahead. Disney announced a bunch of things coming up. Ooh. Uh, teaser for Moana 2. This is this November. Wait, Moana 2, not Mo- the live action? Moana 2, November. Wow. Yep. It was, it was a quick, quick teaser. Animated. She it, went and blew the conch shell, and that was it. Was a, Is it a direct-to-DVD sequel or a released-in-theater sequel? Uh, it said November. I'm assuming Shot, it's, it's in direct theaters. It's direct-to-streaming now. I'm assuming it's in theaters. You know what I mean. It's going to be a hit for Disney, I think, if they put it in theaters. Anyway, yeah. And then I that, think this I, was supposed to be a TV show, by the way. I heard. Okay. I, I don't know. I saw November. I was more. I was paying more attention to the date instead of where it was actually streaming. So I can look that up in a second. But then Disney also had its earnings call and mentioned there's a Toy Story five. Yep. Coming out. Yes. There Frozen is. three. Those are two years yep. away. November twenty or. 2026. I'll figure out the date later. They announced both of those last year, too. Yeah, but they gave dates, I think, this time. Okay. So 2026. So you got two years. And then Zootopia 2. Two. Also yep. 2005. That, that was announced last uh, year. I feel like two out of three of these we don't need, but. Uh, Wait, which ones don't we need? Frozen 3. Ah, oh, we need Frozen And too. Toy Story 5. No, we need as much Frozen as possible. I don't think so. I think Zootopia, <laughs> you could probably pull off another story. It'd be fine. But sure. Frozen, let's just... Let's let's move the... I, I don't mind there being more Frozen. I like Frozen. Yeah, let's just let's just make another movie so just the conspiracy theorists can keep going further into the bipolar issues that present itself in the second one. So. Yep. But anyway, there was, there was that. I can look up the Moana thing, but you guys had stuff. To, oh, wait, just uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or a couple days ago. For those Tay-Tay fans, 
the whole concerts could be on Disney. Disney ponied up the money to get it on their platform. Oh, so that, really? that concert movie thing that they did, wow. that's coming to Disney. That, and that's, that's big. I think at the beginning of March. It's in March. I think it's at the beginning now. Wow. But anyway, go ahead, you guys. <laughs> John, you have some news, I believe. Yeah, well, big news out of the streaming world, you guys. Um, cable's back. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, let me get this right here. So this is Fox, Warner Brothers, and Disney, or as you would say, ESPN, uh, announcing they're going to have a common... They're essentially going to come out with a bundle that's going to uh, put together all their sports channels. So this is going to be, like, over the top. I guess include ESPN+, Plus as well as, like, ABC and Fox. Um, You know, that's, like, a lot of TV right there. That's like, um, you know, sort of crazy to me that like, you know, half of essentially like the uh, consumers of the sports leagues, like the people who actually buy the content from the sports leagues are more or less like uh, teaming up to make something. And it's going to be kind of like sports Hulu. So it's going to be like, you know, they all own part of it and all Hulu. that. Yeah. Notably absent uh, Comcast, <laughs> who is a cable company and has already done this with cable. Um, but you know, that's a different thing. I guess this is supposed to be something that's like, you know, well, you can just buy sports channels, but I sort of, is this already like FUBU is like pretty close to that. Um, I don't know. It's okay. just, it's like, we broke everything up to put it back together again, but in like ways that are sort of worse and more expensive, but we get more content. I, I don't know. Well, they probably for legal reasons i mean it logistically it kind of makes a little bit of sense now so if you get the major players to get equal parts into let's call it a studio let's call it a studio if you get equal parts from everybody to put in to the studio let's face it you can have one bid to get the rights to all nfl games or yeah. one bid to get all the, you know, Tour de France or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which, you know, if everybody's putting in the same amount of money, you know, it's, it's almost like you get rid of this monopoly that some of these sports leagues has. So they aren't competing bids. You're just putting in one price because this is the only place they can sell it to. Right. Exactly. Chris, I I like that you put the NFL, which is like what 95 out of the top hundred TV events of the year and the Tour de France in the same sentence of like, yes, all the, well, all the real players are here. Well, I mean, NBC is involved in this, right? So no, they're not. Well, Comcast so far, not. we'll see, we'll see, yeah. we'll see. I mean, you know, I, I, I kind of like the idea. I found, fa- I found I'm it interesting. Yeah. I mean, I found it interesting. They're not involved. Also CBS and obviously um, Amazon and Apple have also, um, are in the sports game to some extent uh who knows if netflix will be entering it soon it sounds like sounds like everything netflix said they weren't going to do um including live events they've more or less backtracked um so i would guess you'd probably see a sports thing probably not that big at first but something and uh the next couple of years yeah it's just it's it's just crazy to me i mean i think like they actually like maybe had to like exclude CBS and NBC because then if they were involved, then it would be like way too antitrust, you know? (laughs) Um, Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, uh, you say it's antitrust, but I also say that the leagues in and of itself is, uh, what's, what's the word for antitrust for the thing that the product is being sold? You know, like the NFL. That consider- Major League Baseball is the only Major League Baseball in town. Well, well, yeah, it's not, but like they can essentially set the price without repercussions, and it's all tax free because it's not, you know, stuff like we. Keep, that's a business discussion there, but yeah, I'm like, not entirely sure about all of that, but yes, it's it's uh, yeah, we'll 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 see if it gets any bigger. Um, but yeah, just 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 a weird thing. It's like we're we're now on like streaming model like two and a half. Like you know, it's like everybody threw a bunch of money at it, started to pull back. Now they're kind of like readjusting. It's 
I don't know. I just it's it's very interesting to me because all of these companies like totally cannibalize their like networks, their over their you know over the air networks and their cable networks to build like streaming platforms that don't make money. So <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's an interesting world. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know what's also interesting, Chris? Planes. <laughs> <laughs> planes flying through the air. Planes flying through the air. Planes specifically flying over mainland Europe um, between the years 1942. Where does it start? Ooh, I don't know. I don't remember. Masters of the air. For the Masters of the air. Uh <laughs> Many ways, a spiritual sequel to Band of Brothers in the Pacific, uh, which we've previously talked about, I think, with the trailer, um, has premiered now in its third week, uh, which will, by the time you're hearing this, have four episodes uh, on the air, in the air, of the air. Um, Masters of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jesus, guy. <laughs> Let's see how Chris, long can stretch us out. <laughs> yeah. The talking about the actual show. <laughs> Try not to spoil it too much because uh, some people are very stingy and don't want to get Apple TV until they can watch all of it at once. But Chris, you and I, we couldn't wait because I got to tell you, this show's pretty great. <laughs> and let me, I'll just say this, like, I don't want to compare it to Band of Brothers or the Pacific. I didn't like the Pacific as much, but. You can't, um, it's impossible to, you look, cannot compare it. It's just pretty great seeing the planes and the combat. And, like, that's such a... You don't have a lot of movies about, like, air combat and, like, air, you know, like, in the bombers. Because, you know, you're kind of, like, just a sitting duck. Like, you're just on a mission. You know, like... Yeah. We get, like, those fighter scenes in Dunkirk, and it's cool, and it's like you're fighting somebody, and it's like... Ah, that piece of junk movie. Yeah. Whatever. (laughs) Just fighters in general. Okay, whatever. I was just... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not, my, it's not my fault. You guys are just missed the boat on that one. You know, you're you're like Tom Hardy. Um, so anyway, but no, like like you're, when you're in the bomber, it's like you're. I don't know. It's almost like you're doing a job. You know, like it's it's not like it's. It doesn't seem as flashy. Like you're just going. You're flying over a thing, dropping bombs, and coming home. But of course, you're just sitting there like a you know. You're just sitting ducks, like waiting for to get hit by flak, waiting for uh, the fighters to come. And it's just been really powerful and just really good. Like I, it just, the show's really well done. I I'll be honest, like the personal kind of relationship component of it hasn't been as good. I'd say like the best part are like the combat or the mission scenes. Um, but yeah, this, this third episode that just happened was just fantastic. Yeah, I'm going to go with you on this. The the third episode was by far the best. So, do you you did you watch the Pacific, right? I didn't finish it. <clears throat> you didn't finish it. You watched Band of Brothers obviously. Just the first first thing, the opening song. Do you like it over the others? Is this I mean the Band this? of Brothers one is like really good. Band I, of Brothers is good. I love the Pacific one actually the most, I think. Okay. I love the Pacific one the most and Band of Brothers and then this one. Like the opening the opening music thing is what really brings you into it. It's okay. just hol- holistically of all the series. But you're right. This whole show walking into this really excited, also super skeptical because it yeah. is it is the air combat, which I don't want to say in a suspense level, it's ranked at the bottom of let's call it the armed services, but like you could re- it, a lot of it's flying time. Like a lot of it, it is just flying time. If yeah, you're looking at it from that viewpoint, it's a lot of nothing until things get real. And then it's just fl- making it home. But they really did a good job of balancing so far, so far balancing like the downtime versus the, the, the combat. And that's when you read accounts of these pilots and stuff like that, it's, it's like when they're down, it's literally they're having the best time ever. But when they take off, it's it's literally playing roulette. Yeah. And it's just chaos for a day. 
And then for like 10 days, you're just ha having a blast living life to its fullest. So they really nail it with that. You're absolutely right. The combat stuff, unreal. Unreal. This third episode, the one scene just showcases it all. Just like the horror of it all. And that's when he's flying the plane and he's looking out and he's seeing everything just falling. Yep. One of the best things I've seen. Uh, and they showed it really well. And the thing is, I bet you some of this stuff is practical, but a lot of it is CGI. But it's also really good CGI. And I yeah, think it's, it's really good. It's been good. It hasn't been like perfect, but it's it's been pretty good. Um, yeah. And it's a, it's it's um it's not the easiest thing to CGI either, you know, when it's like Definitely historical not. things that like you know what they look like pretty much. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I think I think what they also got down was and and I think what it's this could be I don't know if it's a Spielberg thing, but it, it's probably just good directing is that during intense scenes, the the, the, the they showed speed really fast visually so it's like the pilot the, the fighters coming in and like strafing the planes and all this other stuff good good cinematographers good directors can show speed visually and they do in this and i think that really helps with the, with the progression of some of these these missions um so i you know i love that i love everything about that it's hard like you said with the personal relationships but then again it's it's almost like understandable if you just look up the the rate of return for yeah. some of these pilots. It's so low. I don't think what was their mission count, Sam? You had to complete 21 missions in order to fulfill your duty. Yeah, yeah, but something like five or 10 percent actually made 21 flights. It's some, right. some ridiculous. Oh, I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine that. And, you know, it's like I think we've seen like what, like two or three no i think there's been three bombing missions right now yeah and it's like just think like that's three out of 21 yeah. you know like how just crazy it is and i i think you put it well too of saying it's just roulette because it's it really isn't any like rhyme or reason who's going to get picked off you know of which yeah. which one and you know the the thing is too is it's not like the only way to die is like you know you get hit by you know a plane from the Luftwaffe and like your you know plane just blows up in the air it's like no like you know your engine could take a couple hits not really be too bad at first and then start to slow and then you know catch on fire and then you know like it doesn't take much and I think the other thing that I've kind of um maybe didn't realize either of just like how you know when you're up there and it's like <laughs> they're not flying modern jets or whatever. Like, you know, they're, they're literally just like things of aluminum flying through the air. Um, you know, it gets really cold. It's like, what is it? At one point, does the guy get the burns because the thing is so cold or because it's so hot or they're not? No, burned. it's so cold. It's so yeah, cold. It was so cold. He takes his was, gloves off and touches yeah. the cold metal. It's yeah. Of, of his, um, you know, machine gun. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 just wild. It's it's really crazy, and I I think I just I love that how it's it's so unique in its depiction. Like I said, we don't we don't really get like the bomber movies. Like I think we've like what is it like Pearl Harbor? Like really the last one that would come close, which is saying yeah, a lot. Yeah, no, no, I um, think I think they did it well. I, I and and back to the 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 missions and stuff. We did see three. I, I, I do not believe this is in the order. I think there are a few before this third episode mission, which is a well-known mission just okay. because of the, just because of the, the, the casualty rate. But I, I think this was like the, so now, the I, now I know what mission it is. Yeah. Um, oh, you I think do? It was Schwe Schweinberg, yeah. right? Uh, I think so. Where they end up, what, they where, go do to they Africa? where do they land? Yeah. Oh, so first one. Yeah. So yeah. they go to, so they land in Africa. Spoilers, there's a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is, and, and it, it really shows like how, how bad things can be if you screw something up, like not right. launching the second and third task force. It really just screws everything up. And it's just, they, sh they sh tore these things to shreds. Yeah. And I hope, and I hope, and, and the good thing about this is they have this, this narration that sort of 
describes what the plane is like and who is in it with their responsibilities. And then they touch upon the pit crews. I really hope they show the pit crews next because the planes after that were, as you can imagine, just demolished, like missing wings and, and mm. stuff. It was crazy. And that's all true. Like all the big, you see all the pictures, like these things were demolished when these, and these pit, let's call them pit crews are like they said in the show, 19 years old. Yeah. And they're rebuilding planes in a matter of 10 days to launch it again. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. That's what I want them to show that. Cause I think that's a big story. Yeah. Very un, I don't want to say it's underappreciated because I, I feel like they do appreciate it. But no, it's just, but like you think of the story. Shown. You think of the story, it's the guys up there, but like you do have to realize like the amount of mechanical work and stuff that goes in. Because like if it, if they if they screw up at all, like the guys up there are screwed, you know. Um, no, it, it's been really good. We're three episodes in. I don't know, they're eight or ten. Um, I'm really looking forward to what follows. My only yeah. complaint, um, and I could say the same about Band of Brothers, just because both of these filmed in England um, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you get a lot of you get a lot of british guys you know cutting up uh cutting up a real steak and having lunch on the uh american accents of the uh mid-century oh you know? yeah oh like, yeah. yeah what are you doing you know like <laughs> everyone's um, from brooklyn like jesus christ barry keegan's accent is just like oh god yeah <laughs> It's like it's so ridiculous. I I love the guy, but it's like, oh my god. I don't want to. Uh, ha- have you looked up any of the characters? Oh, no. I don't. I don't want to. I almost want to. No. Yeah. I'm good. I'm mean, not. Not like I'm good, but like I don't want to. I don't want to say spoil it, but you know what I mean. Like I don't want. Yeah. You want to see it as it comes. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. it even, makes sense. Even yeah. even like the missions or the wings, just because it's like. I mean, I feel like I know nothing at all really about like the air missions. I mean, the only big thing I, I knew was, and they hit on this in first or second episode, how the British, um, you know, moved to night bombing and pretty much like, you know, um, not, not outright targeting civilians, but you oh, know, no, they but, did. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, even housing. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's not it's like the Germans, it's not like the Germans didn't do it to them. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, we can get to that. We get into that debate later. Um, <laughs> episode seven, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I bet, I bet, I bet that will come up at some point because I think just did the well. I won't even, I won't even ask Sam because I don't, I don't want to spoil. It's been so good. Um, I, I can't wait for you guys to, to check it out. I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, Sam, you'll love it. I think you'll love it. I know, I know. So, but we're in 100 percent masses of the air. Uh, you know what we could be in on? Um, a little oh, show Mank. called a little show called Halo. Oh, oh okay. From, from the oh. wars of the past to the wars of the future. Well, that's pretty good. How come I Halo think of that? Season two. Um, John, so, that sentence right there may be the best writing involved in that Halo show. <laughs> season one. <laughs> At least of the two episodes I've seen. Supposedly, the Rotten Tomato score in season two is well. We'll get into that. Okay. Um. So just to to do a flashback of oh, what come two on. years do ago, do we need a flashback? Yeah, really quickly. Uh, we we did we did t- discuss Halo, the TV show, on here for those who uh, didn't know. Uh, I hate watched it because it was just so bad and strayed so far from the games. Chris, you ended up finishing season yeah, 5% one. Five percent, yeah. really good. Ninety-five percent. Yeah, just like bad. the action sequence were fine. Uh, really, at times, shoddy CGI, like fight scenes with the yep. Spartans. Yep, yep. Um, and like story was awful. the storylines were so bizarre. Um, but now we're on to season two, so it seems like, uh, in between seasons one and two. Uh, the the showrunners and everybody involved were like, all right, we've heard you. Maybe we should play Halo. Yeah, maybe we should actually play Halo this time. Did they really? Did they really? And uh, so it opens up with them on a planet. 
all the Spartans in their suits, which is awesome. Like all That's, the four of them, the team. All the, the yeah, uh, I always forget what the name of the team is. Um, like Gold silver team, team or something team? like that. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so they're all like on a planet trying to convince people from escaping, and then something goes on. Just don't spoil. I'm not gonna. Okay. This oh, isn't yeah. a spoil. Okay. It's not a spoil. But uh, there's a massive fight with Master Chief, like going on Master Chief on the Covenant, and I was like, "This is awesome! I really dig it." Um, it it was great. Like, and then I was like, "Wait, didn't season one start with like an action sequence?" And then it was like nothing but talky talks for the rest of the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More of that. Oh, uh, well, we are only the second episode. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is more of the same crap. Like I, the reviews are are better. I think it sits at a, like a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's pretty high. It's very high. It's bullshit. This is crap. Okay. And I'm going to keep hate watching it. It's it's like Sean, what? you're part of the problem. I am. <laughs> no, it's it's If just... it's not good, don't watch it. But it's Halo. <laughs> I love you Halo. Say, you say that, but it's yeah, but like it's I, just it's a tr- it's watching a train wreck. Like this season one had the whole like subplot of Quan, and like that oh, that yeah, like my... weird dictator that like oh now he's dead that went nowhere. The weird dictator. Remember the like oh the, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. It was yep, like yep, oh, yep. oh, oh yep. I'm evil now. I'm straight out of a Zack Snyder film. Yeah, that guy. Um, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, that that storyline went nowhere. So obviously, in season two, we need more of those characters. Yeah, it so it's so it seems like it's going to follow the fall of Reach, which is what season one. So all the been. trailers indicated fall of right. Reach, so, which is perfect. Like I think they should have done that in season one, but yeah, no, that's how season one should have been. But instead, they did all this like diplomatic crap and like office talk and master chief naked um pulling out the inhibitor chip out of their ass because that's where our emotions come from um all that stuff and this is more of the same like outside of that opening sequence master chief is only in armor one more time i think and that is like i would say halfway through Episode two, the rest is like them being like, oh, remember how like the uh, UNSC kind of fell apart because Hall C like went crazy and left. This is us rebuilding everything. So we're starting from scratch oh, all boy. over again. It, like so how many episodes are there? It's only one? two. Ten, so, oh, no, how many are coming oh, out? I have no idea. So I have to wait nine more weeks in order to it's to binge it. To it's, binge it. Like, I mean, it's. It's not a hard watch. It's just this isn't Halo. And like it could be a halfway decent sci-fi show. If this was just a sci-fi show about what this is about, sure. I think if they took out if they took out the the Quan yeah. storyline, it would be just twice as better. I guess it's, no, because it's, it's a lot of filler. Cause she was all all filler. Everything else is explaining like Halsey and Cortana, which yeah. is relevant, right? Not well written, but, then, but then it there is was, relevant. Then there was uh, Mackie, the the Covenant like human lady. Like that storyline was dumb. Oh god, awful, miserable. So like, yeah, yeah. Is she in this one? Uh, yeah. That's oh, a spoiler. Come on. There was like a big reveal at the end of the second episode, but like that's that I wanted to punch my phone when I was watching it. Oh, I was like, she should have stayed dead. Like the progress the story. She's gone. Boom. But no, now it's like Master Chief, like, uh, the covenant lady, I miss her so much. I'm like, you knew her for like two days. Yeah, but he's possessed by Cortana now. Not anymore. Because remember, um, yeah. Like, he, at the end of the season, season one. Yeah, she took over. Cortana. Then yeah. six months later. The, the show literally starts off with him lying down and them going, we're losing him. We're, we got to detach. And then you det- he detaches from C- Cortana. Okay. So Cortana has gone. How is this halo? This isn't halo. 
It's not Halo. So far. No. And then there's it, the subplot uh, like going on, because obviously you hire, like, I wouldn't say a well-known actress, but like an actress that's been Halsey. in things as Halsey. So you have to follow that storyline, too. Yeah. So we're following that. So we've got Halsey. We've got Master Chief. We've got... Quan. It, it doesn't fall of reach. Halo Halsey builds something. Halsey that, creates Cortana. No, 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 no. That that yeah. In like, the fall, that's right. In the yeah. fall of reach, they go she to the give, cave. The, yep. Yeah, in the yep. cave, she gives uh, Noble Team Cortana, and they're like, "You need to save this." Yeah, then goes and then they bring her, bring Cortana to the Pillar of Autumn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You just you just gotta like stop watching the show, man. I feel like you should. No, I, I got to like, be. John, this isn't good John, for you. John, this now. entire yes. podcast is just an intervention. I'm sorry we had to trick you this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, there's, no, there's no there's no, uh, World War II show. <laughs> yeah, Mass, Master Air was just a joke. All right, all right, all right. Then how about... We all riddle love me you, this. Sean. We, we want to start riddle with that. We me, all love you. Riddle me this. If I don't hate watch Halo, what's the point of Paramount Plus? Uh, Bob. Criminal Minds. <laughs> I don't watch Criminal Minds. All the Star Trek. I don't watch Star Trek. Mm. No, no. That's all. I, that's what I got. Yeah, no, I'm there's sorry, not much on there. There's not much on there. There's like Nick. You should Nick. watch The Curse. <laughs> I don't think on that's Paramount? on. I don't think that's on Paramount. Is it? It is. Oh, ah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So okay, like. No, no, no. Okay. If you're a Halo fan, don't watch this. <laughs> I I I will take the bullet for the team. I'm gonna wait until. The final one comes out, and then yeah, maybe I can use a different email and sign up for free, and yada yada so yada. No change in status on it. No, no, nope. still quite still, bad. Still very angry with the this. trailer was yeah. good. Yeah, and like yeah, it, you say I mean, that. Re- remember the trailer for season one where it was just like, oh, look at all these action scenes, and they're like, ah, I tricked you. There's oh, yeah. only three yeah, of yeah, them in nothing, nine episodes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it feels like it's more of the same. But it is definitely like building up to the fall of fall reach. Of reach. Um, and like the action scenes should be like nonstop because like the action scenes can be cool. I feel like why not do the the let's call it the final. See, I want them to go to the ring. Right. Which <clears throat> for a show called Halo, we are right. now 11 episodes in. We've seen it once. Yeah, exactly. See, this is the problem is like they do these things now like they're trying to make like six seasons. So it's like we can't we can't do all the cool stuff in the first season. No, just make the best show you can. Yeah. Maybe we'll watch another season if it doesn't suck. That's How- all. You know, it stinks that they had like an entire game about the fall of reach that they could have used as, you know, a, some a kind story of like plot. Yeah. Point. Like, the like the cool blocks. things. Right. Like that's even like a decent prequel to Halo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like you could have had something significant be like the lead up to something that's actually you, like really cool. You know, you could literally be like, hey, uh, Noble Team's cool and all. But we want to tie Master Chief in. Okay, Noble Six is Master Chief. Sure. Boom. Why not? Yeah, right? Because Master Chief didn't achieve achieve legend status until, theoretically, the first game. Uh, Yeah. Which was after Reach. Yeah. So make Noble Six Master Chief and have Master Chief kind of like a, you know, a a newish Spartan. See, I don't want it to be they show up in ninth episode, in tenth episode, they like go to the autumn. Oh, that, and, and that's, that's what that's it's going to be. That's going to happen. But it, yeah, the end of the <laughs> season is going to be them being like coming out of split, uh, slip space and being like, hey, what's that ring thing? You know, yeah. you, you would never have to know how the second season ends if you just stop watching it. <laughs> that's true you can you do it don't, in your mind you don't have to know how stupid the show is going to get if you just put it down so well, I, was, I, I was going to say just cancel no you can't cancel but you didn't yeah. get it for this so you have Paramount Plus just yeah. don't watch it in 8 weeks I'll come over we'll binge it on the whole thing and we can hate watch together the, there is one thing that this Halo show does really well and it makes me want to play Halo Damn really, straight. really Damn bad. straight. I downloaded the things after the season. I'm like, I want to, <laughs> I want to watch good Halo. I, I was on my, uh, on my steam account. I was like, 
Oh, I didn't realize I bought the Master Chief collection. Right, like, everything. You probably it's everything. It's it's oh, you all the Bungie. Too? Yeah, I yeah. Got it. Oh, we should we should we should play. I don't think I have it on my. I have it on Xbox. And that might it's cross be cross platform. platform because it? Microsoft. All right, I got. I don't have live though for Xbox. Uh, you don't need it. Don't need it. Okay. I don't think so. But yeah, it it like. Come on, like it, it's 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 Combat Evolved two, three, Reach, and four, four yeah. is on there. Can I can I ask you a question about the show? Sure. sure. Have they gotten to the point yet? Well, they where they'll do things like, oh man, you should have seen it out there. It was a real blood gulch. No, they 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 don't uh, like do that. They, that they kind don't of. even do the base then obviously. Level yeah, then obviously it's yeah. a bad show. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it's like if you're a big fan of Halo, like myself, um, yeah, it, there's none of that kind of like wink, wink, nudge, nudge moments. Like, remember from the game or something like that? Like, there's none of that. Like, and this, this show could be so much better than it is, but it just, it's crap. You need Sarge. Yeah, why isn't he there? Why isn't Sarge? Yeah, well, so- Sarge isn't, Sarge could technically be. On the pillar, right. So he might not necessarily be on the planet, but like we need, we need that. So, so that's, I, that's the callback. I thought about this the other day, and I brought it up with my boss. And it, like, I've met so many people, and you've heard the internet chatter about this <clears throat> Halo show and about how bad it is. And there's one thing nobody brings up, which I am so surprised. Keys is black in the show. No one cares that they they race swapped a character because of how bad this show is. <laughs> like, remember when Thor came out and everybody was like, Oh, Heimdall can't be black. Like, Oh, he's, you know, Norse mythology. He can't be Idris Alba. He has to be what? Like people like for whatever reason care. No one cares. I don't, I don't think no, that it, says something that nobody cares about the show. I just do you, do you know what people been... care about? You know, what people care about though. What? Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that is true. Yeah. At least one I am of the... seeing him on the, uh, what is it, Dior commercials? The, oh, the th- those have been out for like months. Well, since years. he got freed, quote unquote. No, those were those were happening during the trial. I was getting those on oh, YouTube. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't think they Yeah, I'm going to show up. He's, He's just said, like playing his guitar I, and his I, wolves. I, I was going to say, I'd just put that on and be like, we're the only ones who stuck with him. Screw you, Disney. <laughs> he has a company. lot of. He has a lot of followers, man. Remember when he won an Oscar? No, he didn't win an Oscar, but he was nominated for one. The best fan moment when the uh, the Flash <laughs> broke the Speed Force or whatever. Oh jeez. Was he was in one of the movies or it was fan? It was some like crazy ass Johnny Depp movie. No one's even heard of. Like got oh, nominated yeah. because well, the it, Oscars are like. I mean, the Oscars left it up to the internet. What do you expect? Oh wait, yeah. that category. Yeah, they took that out. Too, oh yeah, right. No, yeah, yeah because they did they, it for a year. Yeah. They did it for a year, and we're like, oh, I this guess everyone. I guess everyone's taking this as a joke. Wait, so who who that was the? It was like fan moment of yeah, like, and who won that? In that the was the Flash from Justice League. Yeah, went back in time to yeah. okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Flash, what is it? Flash enters the Speed Force. Yeah, and then there was there was another uh, there was another and there was one. A movie. Wasn't... Or it was oh, yeah, movie it was or like, performance or something. It, it, I think it was it was movie of the year because I believe the Cinderella uh, with James Corden and that's oh, yeah. right. Uh, that's that's Amazon, yeah. You could vote. Yeah, that was vote, like yeah. horde. I think that made the top five. Yeah. Like, what did, was it like what movie an achievement? Or, no, 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 that the speed one, the flash the one was force. movie moment. I think that was movie moment of all time too. Mm. <laughs> you, you know what? You know it was also an achievement though. Swimming, right, Chris? <laughs> Swimming. <laughs> <laughs> well, in particular, this this particular <laughs> feat. Uh, yeah, we're uh, struggling with the transitions here. Yeah, our transitions, yeah, we're transitioning all uh, over the place. Chris, our transitions are flawless tonight. <laughs> uh. They're so good, we're not even given it time to actually talk about what we we're talking about. <laughs> not sure if we have the endurance for these. But you know who has the endurance? A lady called Nyad. Christina? No, what's her first? Is it Christina? No. 
I don't know. I don't care. Oh, man. Whatever. <laughs> That's not true. You watched Do the care. movie. I did watch the movie. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar nominated film. Oscar dominated film, not for picture or screenplay. I think it's just for actor and actress and supporting actress, right? I'd, I'd yeah, have to look. I, I did I Benning I, and uh, Jodie oh Foster. God, Jodie Foster, yeah. Yeah, we have uh, uh, I butcher this name, Risa Fons, the replacement kicker from the replacements. Uh, re, uh, yeah. He's also the bad in the guy, and Little Nicky. Yeah, and that, Adrian. one of the brothers. Yep, Adrian. And the the Doctor Connor Harry from Potter. the Amazing Spider-Man. Yep, he was Harry Potter yep. in Harry Potter. He's one of the love goods. Um, but anyway, Nyad Nyad's a, a movie on. Well, it's out on Netflix now. If you would like to watch it, it's about an endurance athlete swimmer whose goal in her, uh, let's call it earlier life, was to swim from Cuba to Key West. Which is damn near impossible, given currents and weather. Sharks. And she wanted to do it without a shark uh, protector cage. So I guess I guess that's a thing. Um, so that was one of the stipulations and things like that. So she didn't make it when she was younger. I want to. I forget when they they put the dates up, but they didn't put ages. So I want to say in the height of her physical fitness. We'll say and now she's sixty 20s. years old. Now she's sixty years old. Okay. She wanted to do it again. Um, she comes to this realization moment, like, what have I done with my life? I want to do this. And then she woke up one day and tried swimming. And then she was able to do it for four or five hours or something. She's like, okay, all right, let's do this. And that's what started this whole thing. So it's about endurance swimming. The movie is about endurance swimming in her life. The most exciting of all sports. So listen, I, I wrote this down immediately after this movie. <laughs> Let me preface this with this. It's really hard to make a movie about endurance sports and athletes. And let me tell you, this doesn't succeed either <laughs> at all. As a fan of endurance athlete, the stories are best done in documentary form. Um, and I'm going to be saying the same thing with the, the Marky Mark movie that's coming out about the endurance racers who pick up the dog along the way. I forget what the movie's title's called, but Mark Wahlberg's in it. But anyway... This is what the movie is. And I love endurance athletes. I love it. I love watching all that stuff. Enjoy it to its fullest extent. Uh, but to make a movie out of it, it's not, it's so hard to do. It's so hard to do. And nothing about this movie screams like it was good. Nothing. Nothing about it. it I mean, the story itself, yeah, it's a feel good story. She's, she's a lesbian. She, she's like, it. She, she likes this when she was. Younger, her coach molested her, which I mean, unfortunately, it's been it's, it's more in the news often, more often than not at this yeah. point. But, um, you know, you know, it's got that backing behind it. You don't necessarily get a lot of that. Um, those types of moments don't really hit home. I think the the, mo the hit home moment that they want to show you is her actually making it. And she makes it, I believe, on her fifth try. I think she's 60. I want to say she's like 63 at this point. So it took her three years. She failed once, like jellyfish, box jellyfish, and oh. all this other stuff. Uh, CGI was not good, which is, <laughs> you know, it's a small studio. It's one of those movies that has, like, ten studios at the beginning. You oh, know, it's yeah. a small so, oh contributing factor to everything. So Yeah, I think it's Netflix, but I think they just bought it. So Yeah, they, yeah there's a bunch of small studios. It's like everybody pitches in to make this movie, which is, you know, whatever. That's fine. Uh, CGI wasn't that good. It's expected with the budget they probably had. Um, <laughs> some of it was just like blatantly bad. Um, like that her nighttime swimming when she was talking with the coach, just God, it was it was awful. The shark scene was awful. Um, but you know, it's 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 a movie that is just about physical endurance feat. I mean, most of this movie is her swimming in the water and, and trying to get across the 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 what is it called? Sea? Is it a sea or is it a Goal? I don't know. From Cuba, do from, straight maybe. Is it, it's Cuba to Key West. Either way, most of this movie is about her uh, going across there. And honestly, it's really not that good. It's really yeah. not. And you know, do you, after uh, seeing this too, I'm still like, why the hell was Margot Robbie nominated for Barbie? Because, <laughs> um, what's her face? Uh, Annette Bening, like fine, but no fine but no. you, yeah you don't you don't see it at all what about with jody foster any anything there that i could see that i could see yes 
I mean, they're both good actresses. Like, yeah, they are. Know. They are both. These good. might not be good performances, but they are. You know, I, I you know, there's, there's, um, I know Annette Bening was trying to perform the way that Nyad was, but sometimes portraying a person like that on screen, no matter how accurate you get it, isn't just going to play well to audiences. And I didn't, I didn't, I don't like it. I, just the personality. So if that's her real life personality or the way she acted, I just wasn't a fan. So I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. But I didn't like it. Not a good movie. You want to give it a rating? Six. Ooh. All right. <laughs> if you want to give we... it a shot, if you want to give it a shot, go for it. But I won't. I won't recommend yeah. that. It seems like it's a tough framing. Like you know, like you said, Chris. Like, how do you make a movie out of that? It's hard to. It's best in documentary yeah. form, I think. Um, Plus, they spliced we, it. Oh, I forgot. They spliced it with actual scenes from oh, throughout from, oh. the movie. Oh, interesting. Like, it just, no. Mm. It's like if Forrest Gump was only about him running across country. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's, yeah do, that's right. Do we still, did we still want to talk May, de, May, of, May December? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. I very. I think I gave a, a mini review. So Chris, uh, why don't you take it away? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on this one. Oh yeah, I think I think your exact words were. Um, it wasn't Oscar worthy, but what a ride! Right? Is that what it was? I, uh, I sure. I I'll stand by that. Yeah. Even so, if I didn't say it. <laughs> so I sort of had an idea what this movie was about. I didn't fully know. Um, did we? So you did you talk about it at all? Or, I don't um, remember if you did. It I was think. a while ago, and who knows if that episode was even released. So just, <laughs> you know. All right. Well, anyway. <laughs> you, you can just do a recap. Yeah. Yeah. Story starring Natalie Portman and Julian Moore and um, who's a Charles Belton. It's a story about a, a teacher who <sighs> molested and raped legally a student who was in the seventh or eighth grade. And they she went to prison she got out of prison and now they have a family and it's natalie portman's an actress and hollywood decided to make a movie about it so natalie portman went over to their house and kind of sort of stayed with them to get an idea of what what she's like because she's playing the, the 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 lead actress her um julia moore's character and as you'd expect i mean the movie goes down just the road that you would expect it would Natalie Portman is a method actor and she eventually sort of morphs into this <laughs> this like woman who likes younger boys and you know you saw it, it like you see it coming a mile away see it coming a mile away nothing about this movie really uh was was shocking or new particularly new because this story is everywhere not just in this, the person who wrote this, um, Sammy Birch, actually wrote this based on a story uh, of, what's her name, Mary Kay Letourneau. Letourneau's life, where this this sort of happened. Almost, so, almost the same exact thing. I mean, not not the shadowing of the, the you know, not, not where the movie's set, but like the, you know, set up for it. Yeah. So, Essentially, I mean, you know. Had a relationship, went to prison, was pregnant while in prison, gave birth with them, had kids. And yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. And obviously you could tell in the movie, like the, the kids are like messed up by this. They just don't show it that well. The, the kid mm-hmm. who was born in prison, the one who's in college is clearly just like realized that, wow, this doesn't happen usually. So, mm. but no, it's it's. um like nothing, nothing about it is new. Nothing about it is shocking. And you know what the, you know what, I don't want to say you know what the bad part is, but there was no drop at the end. I, I was, what do you mean? Almost expecting like a, a, a hit me moment or like something, something to unravel. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Well, get you kind of, that. you kind of get it a little bit. It's, it's not as. It's a little more subtle for sure. But like the moment when he's like smoking weed with his son on their, you know, um, on their roof, essentially like that's kind of, and you know, the whole thing throughout is like, Oh, this kid kind of is stuck at 14. 
because, you know, he kind of went through all this then and just, you know, you kind of don't progress past a certain point if you've yeah. had like a lot of trauma or a very specific sort of experience at that point. And, you know, hey, when you have <laughs> he probably what had kids at like 16 or 17. So like say you know, even younger than that. Yeah, that's even younger than that. If they met in seventh grade, that's middle school. Right. So did I mean a lot of middle schools are separate from high school. So if they were doing it, he barely was 13. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's not great. So, I mean, it, it, I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't gathering like I didn't get that. Like, I didn't get that feeling that usually would come with this kind of movie that you thought there'd be some kind of like Carthar or Re- revelation. Let's call it revelation. Yeah. Like, like yeah. he tells her off or something like that. And like, I think he kind of does a little but like, yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's not, you know, you're not getting any of that. I wasn't, I wasn't following that. And, and it's just, I don't know. I don't know. This is just it's, a weird, it's, weird movie. It's a I weird think, movie. I think Natalie Portman's signing up for these things that just, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. It's becoming one of it's, those anything you're in, I don't really want to do. So I think the movie is like a lot more of a dark comedy than you might think, like the first time watching it. Like you just kind of like it's one of those where it's like in the moment it's like, oh, this is weird, but like when you think about it, like subsequently it's kind of funny. <laughs> not not like what happened, but just like the situations around it. It's like yeah, very it, like darkly like, comedic. And then like they also do this weird thing too, where like they like drum up this like melodramatic score for moments that don't really relate. Like there's oh, like, very that early on, oh, it, it like starts to play like it's like a horror movie, and you know there's this cookout that they're having, and um, it's when Natalie Portman's character shows up and at at Julianne Moore's house, and she's like <laughs> this music playing, and she's opening the refrigerator door, and she's staring into it, and like you're thinking it's like. You know, like your horror, your mind's like on a horror movie thing, and it's like, oh god, what's in there? And she's like, I don't think we have enough hot dogs. Yeah, they <laughs> they tried to, they knew they didn't have much, so they had to try and uh, arter it up, I guess. But I don't I could, know. I don't know if I'd say that's. I think that's just kind of them. Just I don't know. Like I said, I, like I think it's kind of more of a dark comedy than you would think. I I don't. I, I'm not getting that at all. Not at all. And I I mean, I definitely won't rewatch this a second time, but yeah, there's, there's no way. There's no way. Wait. I also had a question. She was looking at the sex offender registry. She was on that, right? The, uh, Borman was uh, Julianne Moore. I think so. Yeah. Right. So she shouldn't have been allowed at graduation. I don't know. I think there aren't different states like different how they work like that. I, I, I think, don't know. I, I don't think know. there was talk how. The town they're in, which is, I guess, on an island, is somewhat, like, welcoming of them. But then it seems at another point, it's like, actually, it's just, like, a few people who are kind of nice. Because, like, she she has this business of, like, she makes cakes. Like, she's not, like, a baker. Like, she's, like, a home baker. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, she sells, like cakes to the same five people or whatever and then when one of them stops buying the cakes from her she gets really pissed off and yeah she has a breakdown she has a breakdown yeah um the only the only one who really gives you anything is the son her first son which is friends with with the boy oh yeah that was interesting yeah the one who's like the singer just drunk in cigarettes and that he's the only one who gives you a little bit of there's all yeah. right, this could be this could be worth it to watch, but then it's well, just... then like she's yeah, and then Natalie Portman's talking to her ex husband too, and it's like, yeah, it's just I don't know, it's just like some crazy mo. I I I I would recommend it, but it's not like something like oh yeah, let's go fire that up or you know like it's not like I'd come back to it, but I do stick by that. It's like a, an interesting experience, and not like in any kind of like overly cringy way. Like I think it's like a perfectly watchable movie. It's a little slow, maybe. Um, and it's definitely like very talky, but like, I don't think it's like terribly long either. Um, but it kind of like 50. Was it? Okay. Well, that's, it's not that long. Um, but well, um, it's long for this type of 157. Yeah. It's okay. long for this, this, uh, type of story. Fair enough. I did like though, how at the end they have this, um, you know, 
there's a lot of kind of like commentary in there of like how actors are like just about actors in general. Like it's not a very like positive portrayal. Like Natalie Portman, like like very clearly like borrows some like really sort of like messed up moments or like what is it? She's on the call with like a casting director being like, I don't know if this 15 year old is like hot enough to play my, you know, <laughs> lover. Like essentially yeah. that's what, and it's funny because it's like, she doesn't come out and say that, right? Like she used some kind of like somewhat coded words and it's just like, yeah. Oh my God. But like, yeah, that's, that's sort of how that works though. You know, like you, you do have to have that person be like, it does have to seem plausible, you know, like it sounds like this movie is something between like a very, like a low budget independent movie or a lifetime movie kind of thing. You know, like, it's not like a, I mean, obviously it's not a big production. I'm um, just describing it, but yeah. And then at the end, they, they show it, they show like actually like her doing it, like a scene from it. Oh, it's, it's actually, it's the sort of, um, what would you call it the the scene where their romance begins and it's like <laughs> yeah it's just an interesting experience <laughs> i got no, nothing that. out of that scene i got nothing out of that no? they did okay. it they tried doing it like five times what am i supposed to i got nothing out of what am i supposed to think when i watch this it's just the gotcha. scene that they're filming obviously they're filming this movie so what is what's the revelation um, here what's the point <laughs> It's been a little bit since I watched it. I think it was just like, I don't know. It's this sort of like almost, um, oh man. It's definitely like a high minded movie at times, but it's almost like just like the meta commentary of like, man, why the fuck are we making this movie? Like not, not the movie itself, but like the, you know, the movie that Natalie Portman's character is starring in. It's like, this is like really screwed up that like, we're just reenacting all this. You know what I mean? So, so you're like so for what a, a, a two a statement on just being too meta. Yeah. This, a little bit. Well, I mean thing. of just, you know, yeah. Or just in general of like, you know, this is like a really messed up situation that we're just making an entertainment, you know, I can't, um, I can't, this is just, this movie should never have been made. It, I can't. I can't. This is what happens when people just live, grow, live, and be born, live, and just die in Hollywood. This is just what happens. And you get yeah. movies like this. This is the same. This this writer also wrote the Coyote Acme movie for HBO, the one that got written off. Okay. For tax tax purposes, like, but this is somehow coming back. Is it? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. I thought someone right else there? or they were shopping it around. I think or they, something. They were oh, were they shopping it around? It around? Yeah. All right. Well, either way, that's probably the movie that was it's coming off. out. Like it'll come out. Well, we say. Well, we'll see. But you know. Yeah. I can't. I, I can't. I like. I, I don't understand why this movie was. My, written. my favorite thing that you guys like always do is find the like obscure screenwriting credits someone had. Like at some point, it's like, oh well, all their movies must suck or whatever. This is <laughs> like they were like the fourth act, like fourth person writing a script that doesn't get even released but it's this is the second movie that they wrote or the first and yeah. every, there was a few shorts before it but okay like that's just i can't i don't know this movie is awful i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry this movie i didn't think awful. you'd like it i i i i wanted to say yeah um i that was an interesting choice i would say yeah yeah no i i I would not have recommended you watching this one, I especially, can't. especially, I, and, and uh, you came, you like almost the first thing you said when you came over tonight was like, "Oh God, none of those were nominated for Best Picture." <laughs> like, yeah. there's another two you have to go watch now. <laughs> I just wasted, four, well, I just wasted four hours of my life. Yeah, <laughs> God, um, this movie what, was just so bad. What what are you, what are you giving May December? Oh jeez, a four. Oh wow, wow. Wow. Really didn't like it. I couldn't stand anything about this movie. Okay. Except for this, like the first son. The first son was the only thing that could have salvaged an interesting movie. Yeah, he does come in like really hot, just being like, she's know, what crazy. Is, was he? She's yeah, like she is. Insane. She is the voice. She is the voice of the rest of the people in the U.S. who live off the island. 
Yeah. Like, that's it. Everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid on the island except for this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Comes in with, like, a fire and fury for, like, a five-minute scene in a bar. And then it's just never heard from again. Um, I don't know if I ranked this. I think I already did, so I won't won't re-give the score in case I don't do it. But it was on my top ten. Which really? Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Though not bare, the not 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 too high up into it, but yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I like I don't, I don't know why this was nominated for screenplay. I think it was screenplay, right? Yeah, best. Uh, I think original screenplay. I mean, <laughs> it is bullshit. it is it is a bit of a unique. Uh, you you got to say it is a little bit of a unique uh, concept, though. It's not. Go watch one <laughs> Lifetime movie a week. It's on the Lifetime Network every week. John, by the way, you gave it a 7.8. 7.8? All right. Yeah, I can feel that. So that's a that's a three-point golf. That's it's almost four points. Almost four. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to happen. This that's movie. nothing compared to what the lighthouse would be. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. <laughs> if you ever watch it, watch. we just you have to tell us about it. Or can we all watch it together? I think you should just let me be on my own. I don't know. Just, I want to experience the pain that Chris goes through. Can we? If there was ever yeah, like a 4K, yourself, if there yeah. was ever a 4K for the like 4K interactive theater for this, I would not. Or 4D, want that. 4D interactive theater. I would not want that for that movie. Oh well. The shit what scene. Get- I'm good. I don't want. I want to. I don't want to 4D the shit scene. I need to be in the right mindset for the the lighthouse. I think. But John, you don't want a widescreen for the uh, four by three uh, framing. <laughs> I'm assuming they don't poop in a bucket like. Uh, oh, no mad land. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Francis that movie was terrible. That movie's real. Like I, I can't. 2020 was such garbage, man. On fu- upon yep. further review and reflection about that movie, yes, yeah. not awful. But compared to everything else that came out that year, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. If no, I actually have a movie. I, I, gen- I, there's no. I'd say there's like two, at least two movies I genuinely really liked for 2020. Yeah, Sound what? of Metal and Another Round, which I guess they're making an American version, which I'm not feeling. But right. anyway. All right. Well, that wraps it up. We go out on a high note of a uh, lady in a relationship with a 13 year old. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, well, Sam, Sam has Sam cineast Sam over there has seen two Oscar movies. Best yeah, picture. Yeah. Of I came none in of us, with stuff, but nobody else saw it. None so. of us have gotten off our ass. Can I ask you, which, which did you like better? You've seen American fiction and other, or, um, What's the other one? Uh, poor Pretty things. things. Poor, poor things. things. I was going to say young things. It's like, no. <laughs> um, I actually liked American fiction more. Okay. Yeah, we will talk about those for sure at some point. American fiction will be on Amazon. I don't know when, but at some point. Um, poor things will too, but I'm going to try to see if I can catch those in theaters. I don't know when, but that does it for this week. We're on, we're on social media. Check us out there. Um, uh, you know, we'll we'll probably be back next week. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, <laughs> till next time. See you later. Adios.